Hello, I'm Carolyn and in this video I'll show how you can use Inkscape to create designs with spirals for your cutter. Shown here are a few examples. For all of these projects I start by creating a page full of spirals like this example here. I then use these to create more designs. I'm going to open a new document and I'll start from the very beginning. As I'm working with spirals the first thing I need to do is draw a spiral. The next step is to make this stroke width thicker. So I'll just open fill and stroke. Then I'll open the tab stroke style and at the top is where I'll change the width. My settings are millimetres but you can choose a different setting if you prefer. So I might just make this two millimetres. Just zoom in and I can see where the spiral ends in the centre it's very messy looking. So to change that and give it a neater look, on cap I'm going to select brand cap. That just gives a better look. All these spirals that I create, I want them to have the same width. And to make sure it stays the same, at effect, see this first icon here? See how mine is not selected? That means when I change the size of the spiral, the width is still 2 millimetres. If I click on that, I'll just show you what happens. I'll make it smaller and the width is changed. So if you want the width to stay the same, at effect, click on the first icon so it's not shaded grey. And when you change the size of these spirals, you're guaranteed that the width will stay the same. All I have to do now is create a tangle of these spirals. I duplicate them, I resize them, I rotate them. So I'll just duplicate. I can't really give instructions for this stage. This part really comes down to personal preference. So I'll duplicate again. You can see here the spiral extends beyond the stroke line of the previous one. All I have to do is click on this spiral until I see these two little nodes and with this last one I can just select it, duplicate. What I'm trying to achieve is a random effect and I must admit I have a lot of trouble with random. What I can do this time is either bring the spiral back or if I want to give it a different look I can just make the spiral continue around to the next one. Of course when you're creating these you don't have to fill the whole page you just need to make it bigger than the projects you plan on creating. See in this case I've got two parts that are overlapping more than I want them to. Just click again to get the nodes up, just change the end of the spiral, select the other one and do the same thing, just change the end of the spiral. So you get the general idea, I don't have time to create a page full of these spirals and it would be pretty boring to watch. Hopefully this was enough information to help you create your own. To save time I'm now going to move to one I created earlier. Let's just click on them, we can see I've still got individual spirals. Now at this stage I like to duplicate it. You don't have to do this. Why I like to keep a copy of this? If I decide to create a project that needs a bigger mess of spirals, all I have to do is add some more on. But this is totally up to you whether you work on a copy or whether you work on the original. With the copy I'm going to select all parts. If I look down the lower left we can see I'm working with a stroke. So if I'm working with a stroke it actually won't cut with these thick lines, it will cut with a single line. So I need to change it to an object. If you're working with stroke you go path, stroke to path. If you look in the lower left when I click on stroke to path it's going to change. You see it changed from a stroke to a fill. Now I can see that I've got 29 separate objects. They're going to cut separately and I need this to be one piece. To achieve that I will go path, union and I've now got one piece. 
I'm just zooming in. Quite often when you're putting these spirals together, where there's joins, you've got these little tiny pieces. Now, unless I'm cutting out a really large project, these are not going to look very nice when I cut them out. So I'm going to double click to get the nodes, just drag the mouse around them and delete. Same here and here. And another thing to look for is where you've joined the spirals, see like here, I wasn't too accurate. I've actually had one overlap. So I'd prefer to change it now, otherwise all the future projects are cut. I'm going to have to change this every time. So I might just select this node and delete it and just tidy up the curve. Look, I missed another one. So I'll just select them and delete. So now I've got the basic tangle of spirals. I'm going to use this as the base for many designs. So I'll duplicate this and I'll work on the duplicate. For the first project, I'm going to make the circle that's got spirals as a cutout part. So I'll draw a circle. I'll duplicate it. I'm just going to change the color so we can see I've got two. With this second circle, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Now what I want to change is this circle that's in the middle I want it to have the look of these spirals. To achieve that, this small circle, I'll move it over and place it underneath the spirals. With the circle, I can move it around and get a different look depending on where I cut it out. I might leave it there. The circle is selected, so I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the spirals. Then I will go path difference can see I've now got a stencil design and if you like you can duplicate that keep it aside and create more projects we'll just use this one for now I'll bring it back to the circle raise it to the top select them both I'm just going to align them so the central while they're both selected I'll go path difference you can see here I've now got the circle with the spirals running through it and that will cut out in one piece. And you can keep this stencil and create more projects. If I wanted to put it on the front of a card, so I can draw the rectangle for the card, then select the stencil cut out and place it in the card. It must be the top object. I'm just going to select both and align. Then I'll go path difference. So you can see how easy it is use this mass of spirals to create stencils that can then be cut out of many shapes. So this card's got the circle with the spirals cut out. If I wanted to create a rectangle, that's quite easy. I'll draw the rectangle to represent the card. I'll draw a smaller rectangle to be the cut out part. I'll just change the colour. So once again, I place it underneath these spirals. Now I find with rectangles and squares, I'm a bit more careful with the placement. The corner parts I like to have in a bit of the white. You can see that each corner is now in the white section. So I'll select both parts, go path difference, bring the stencil over to the card, raise it to the top, select both parts, align, then go path difference. Now let's zoom in. And you can see here why I said place the corner of the rectangle on the white part. When the stencil is cut out, I've got white parts in the corner. So I've still got that nice rectangle shape as opposed to having darker blue and looking like the corner is cut away. And I noticed when I zoomed in, I missed some of these modes, so I'll just get rid of them now. So if you've seen projects like this and wondered how they're created, hopefully this will help you get started. So open Inkscape and experiment and see what you can create. Thank you.